everyone, if you're watching on Facebook Live, hello, I'm Greg. I would work happy today. Uh, we're going to talk for about uh, 20, 30 minutes on one of the ways to work happy, which is how to use laughter in the workplace. And yes, it's 2020. We have to be careful, but there are so many good, positive things about working happy and laughing at work or at home or with our friends. It's a social glue, but there's there's so many benefits. We're going to be going over three of those today. We're just waiting for a couple more people to log in here on Zoom, and then we'll get going. Looking forward to it. If you have any comments or questions, I'm going to try and be flipping back and forth. Uh, thank you all for joining me. Uh, Ryan, it's good to see you again. Uh, it's been a while since uh, I was up there uh, with you guys. Uh, Brian McDonald, uh, I'm not sure if he's just listening in, but Brian and I have known each other. We met on a plane to Vegas and we told jokes and we laughed and that was about 20 years ago. So one more benefit of, of laughter, it, it's a social glue that, that brings us together. And here's Jim just checking in as well too. Every month I'm going to be going over a different topic on how to work happy, the benefits, why it matters, how to do it, and those kinds of things. Because over the last three years, I have learned how to work happy. Uh, I haven't always worked happy. I've had jobs uh, that have stuck. This is probably one of the better jobs that I've had. I also have worked in the NHL and whatnot. So today, like I said, I just, oh, I'm ahead of myself. Today, I just want to share with you and give you guys uh, some tips on how to work happy. I don't have anything to sell, so feel free to put your credit cards away. But at the end, if this does resonate with you, I'll, I'll give you uh, my calendar. We can jump on a call and we can talk further if that works for you. Again, thank you for being on here. If there's one thing that I would love for you to take away from our time together today, is this quote by one of my heroes, a man I got to work with a couple of times, Robin Williams. And he said, everyone you meet is fighting a battle and nothing about. Be kind always. And I don't care if you're the CEO or if you're the janitor or it's your first day in the job. But when we put ourselves in other people's shoes, and always be kind. You never know who you're going to run into or what's going to happen or what conversation is going to come out of it. So again, everyone that we meet is fighting a battle that we know nothing about. Always be kind. And that just makes the world better for everyone. Uh, a little bit about me. Those of you who haven't followed Work Happy or do not know who Greg Kettner is, I am a keynote speaker, trainer, and coach, all things happiness. I've been in the sales world for the last 29 years doing sales. Managing teams, leading teams, worked in the National Hockey League, Major League of Soccer, a couple of SaaS companies, and a couple of startups. A former stand-up comedian, I took six years out of my life to pursue my dream, and it took me six long years to figure out that I liked money more than I liked stand-up, but I learned a lot of lessons, and it was through stand-up that I ran into an old friend of mine from college, who is now my wife, Becky. Again, another reason uh, to laugh. I can start a relationship, and here I am moving from Canada down to Walla. Back in early COVID, a couple of weeks in, I lost my job. I was director of membership services for our local chamber of commerce. Uh, I was told that I was no longer essential. Uh, my response was, I think you're no longer essential, but he was the manager, and I drew the short straw, and there I was out of a job with one phone call. And so I decided what I wanted to do in talking with my wife, Becky, we decided, why don't I go out and help other people work happy? I've always been an optimistic guy. The glass is always half full, unless it's poison. Obviously, then it's half empty. But I wanted to start and help other people work happy. Because like I said, I've had jobs uh, where I was micromanaged. I wasn't happy. I was checking in, checking out, working for a paycheck. But when we do work happy, there are so many good benefits for our health, our mental health, our friendships and even our wealth. And then I have an audacious goal uh, to help a million people work happy. So how you guys can help in that, uh, when you see work happy on social media or an email, feel free to share that with, with your friends, your families, your colleagues. Um, and we're gonna be doing these every month on the second Wednesday of each month at the same time. Unless there's a better time, then please let me know um, through email or social media if there's a better time to do this. All right. I'm learning how to run my computer. So we're talking about laughter in the workplace. Obviously, laughter has to be very PC approved. And I've already gone through this one. My wife and I started listening to Sebastian a couple of years ago. We went from Spokane, uh, Washington, about three or four months ago. It was an outdoor concert. And right next to the was a drag racing strip. 
And so he made, during his hour and a half show, he must have referenced the drag racing cars about 15 times, but he built it into his act. But I just want to start out, if, if you're at work, maybe turn down the volume. I, I have gone through it, so it should be HR approved, uh, but we don't want to just interrupt anybody else. But here's uh, Sebastian talking about Craigslist. So it's, I think, about four minutes. So we'll start with this, if this works here. What was the very funny Sebastian Maniscalco? Everybody can hear? I went to the Little Italy out here in Montreal. Nice. I like it. I went to the deli over there. I like Italian deli. There's just no options. It just says sandwich. And there's a guy in there cutting the meat. There's one of He's going to make you whatever the hell he feels like. And you're going to have to eat it. <laughs> Not so if you're going to Subway. That's a whole afternoon. If after. I got behind the woman. It looked like it was her first time out ever. She came up to the counter. How does this work here? <laughs> it's just that one big bread you don't see. <laughs> she saw the condiments, her head almost popped off her body. <laughs> and it looked like a pigeon just packing for food. I'll have the cucumber. And I'll have, no, not that tomato, the one on the side. <laughs> With no seed. The guy asked me, what do you want on your sandwich? I told him, run it through the garden. <laughs> Just run it through the garden. <laughs> Whatever I don't like, I'll throw it out my car window. I forget the pickles, right? Yeah. The whole world's changing, man. Internet's nuts, right? You got people putting stuff for sale on the internet, this Craigslist, whatever it is. And then strangers are going to come to your home <laughs> to look at your stuff? What are you, nuts? This is an invitation to get murdered. We had garage sales growing up. We just, we threw the garbage out on the driveway. We had some signs with an arrow, come get our garbage. <laughs> and people would mill around your yard, but you would watch them, right? They would get a little too close to the house. Hey, back up, back off, back up. What do you want? Can we use your bathroom? Bathroom, get the hell off the property. And whatever we didn't sell, we threw it out. But we broke it before we put it in the garbage. <laughs> That's my Italian father. He's like, they're not going to buy it at my sale. So they're not going to come by later and steal it out of my garbage. Saw the couch in half. <laughs> 12 years old, I'm sawing the couch. Pop the eyeballs out of the teddy bear and then decapitate the head. You throw the head out on Monday and then the body out on Friday. Peace out. All right, the parents today are different than how we grew up, right? Parents today, come on. Everybody's bragging about their kids. What is everybody's kid fantastic? Everybody's a winner today, though, right? When did this start? 29th place. There's your trophy. Oh, no. Oh, my parents, they prepared me for life, disappointment, failure. They put me in basketball. <laughs> they came to the first game. At halftime, my father sprinted down from the stands like, get the hell in the car. You suck. <laughs> he looked me dead in the eyes. Listen, you humiliated yourself. You embarrassed our entire family. Uncle Luigi took off work to watch what you just did. <laughs> get in the trunk. Italians, we don't play basketball. 
When's the last time you put an NBA game on and said, take a shot, Nunzio? <laughs> My name is Sebastian. You guys have been a fantastic audience. Take care of yourself. All right, so that's Sebastian. Anybody has anybody seen Sebastian? You can put in the you can either chat or in the chat or talk, but anybody watch stand-up comedy on a regular basis? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, okay, well we'll keep going. But laughter is the best medicine. We we've, we've all heard that and it's true. They have done studies in what the research shows is that kids laugh up to 300 times every day, and as adults, only 17. So somewhere along the way, I don't know if we're so stressed we don't have time to laugh, or we're stressed because we don't take the time to laugh. But remember that, even if we take five minutes every day, put it in our calendar at work, obviously in the office, it's gotta be HR approved and friendly, or earphones in, but when we do that, when we laugh, it releases dopamine and endorphins into our brain, and that's the drug that makes us feel good, happy, awake, and alive. We do need to laugh more, and it, it's better for us, it's better for our jobs, it's better for our mental health, for everybody. Why work happy? Google provided these for me, but I know they are to be true, but there's so many positive effects from working happy. I know we've all had really great jobs, and we've all had so-so jobs, but here's the top 10, but there's increased productivity, increased mental health, which I'm a big proponent of and talk about all the time. Enhanced creativity. They've done study after study. And one of the studies was they picked two uh, test groups and they each group was working on a puzzle for 20 minutes. And then one test group watched a documentary for 20 minutes. And one uh, group watched Robin Williams live for 20 minutes. Um, and afterwards, they calculated who did better and was more productive. And the people who watched and laughed at Robin Williams were 18% more productive within just 20 minutes of, of laughing. There's stronger team collaboration, reduced stress level, higher job satisfaction, increased employee engagement, positive workplace culture, attraction and retention of employees, and improved customer satisfaction. We all need these things and want these things, and we can do this by working happy. And one of those things that allows us to work happy is using humor and laughter in the workplace. Quick story about this old couple. Not sure who they are, but they've been married for 80 years. And it, one day they found out that the wife was terminally ill and she was going to be passing away. And so the husband started taking care of his lovely wife. They had kids, grandkids, great grandkids, a wonderful marriage. And as he was getting the affairs in orders, he was doing everything for her because she was going to be passing on. And he got to the last item, which was his shoebox in the closet. And when they got married, the wife had put the shoebox in the closet and she had told her husband, he said, whatever you do, never, ever look inside the shoebox. And he was a smart man, and so he never did. So he went and got the shoebox and sat down beside her bedside and said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss you. I love you. What's with the shoebox? And so she started telling the story about the shoebox. And she said, when, before we got married, my mom told me to never go to bed mad at you. And if I was mad at you, all I would need to do is stay up late and crochet a doll, and everything would work out fine. He says, wow, that, that's great. Thank you so much. And he opens the box, and inside the box are three crochet dolls and $60,000 in cash. And his mind was just blown. He didn't know what to think. He's, I can't believe it. We've been married for 60 years, only three crochet dolls. I'm sorry for those three crochet dolls. I love you. I'm going to miss you. And then he got together, and he said, honey, what's with the $60,000? And she smiled at him and said, that's the money I made from selling the dolls. So even... A story about an older couple, when we laugh, it connects us and it allows us to get in the right frame of mind. Three things that I want to go over, hacks that we can do ourselves and why, but when we laugh, it reduces our stress. It lowers our blood pressure. When we laugh, we burn calories, but laughter has been shown to reduce stress hormones and trigger the release of endorphins, promoting a sense of well-being and relaxation. And when we're at our jobs, if we're up against a deadline or working with a a difficult client, or something went sideways on a project, if we take time to laugh, either with a group or by ourselves, it allows us to reduce our stress. And when we're not stressed, we can perform our jobs uh, even better. Here's a picture of Robin Williams and I after a show we got to do together. And the backstory on this 
it was a Wednesday night in Vancouver, British Columbia. We were at a pub doing open mic. There was a seven o'clock and a nine o'clock show. I was a rookie, so I was on the seven o'clock show. And then the pros were on the nine o'clock show, but the rookies were trying to get onto the nine o'clock show. And the only way to do that was to tell our jokes over and over again, get better, get more laughter, and then we move on up. So it's seven o'clock. There's eight people in the bar. Nobody had to pay to get in. There was a bartender, wait staff, and five comedians uh, and two people to watch us. And I was third on the bill that night. And halfway through my set, my five minute set of fart and poop jokes, that's all I had at the time. Uh, the door opened up and in walked my hero, Robin Williams. And in my head, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it's Robin Williams. I, how am I going to connect with this guy? And so he came in, he sat down and had a beer uh, and I finished my set. And as I walked off stage, I thought, how am I going to be different than anybody else who's gone up and asked him for an autograph or a picture or whatnot? I didn't want to be that guy. So I decided that I was going to pretend I had no idea who he was. And it totally worked. I, I grabbed a beer. I went and sat down beside him and just started having a conversation. Said, hey, where are you from? He's, oh, I'm up here uh, working on a movie. I'm from San Francisco. And I said, oh, that sounds really cool. What do you do in the movies? Are you the camera guy? Are you in catering? Do you hold a mic? And he looked at me like, how does John Goodman have no idea who I am? So I kept it going and we were laughing. And finally I said, you know what? I can't take it anymore. I know who you are. And he said, he goes, thank you for treating me like that. He goes, we connected through laughter and he goes, I'll tell you this, Greg. He says, keep on doing what you're doing because you'll never know the difference you make in someone else's life. And I've always remembered that. And I can tell you story after story of, of people I met and the laughter has changed the situation or our mindset. So I, that's one thing I really took away from Robin Williams is laughter is great for connecting people. And you never know the difference that we will make in someone else's life. Number two, the other hack I want to go over is team building. When we laugh together, it's social glue, if you will. I, I don't know of anybody that I've laughed with that I haven't wanted to hang out with or work with or help. But team building. So when we laugh together, it creates those social bonds among team members. And in any job or any workplace, whether you're in construction or you're in marketing or in finance, when we come together and laugh together, we can build teams together and we can have those relationships. So if something does get a little bit sticky between one another, we already have the relationship from laughing together. And so that friction, it might not be quite as, as rough. Here's a picture of me and my family. Obviously, I'm on the left of the screen. Brian Regan is a very funny HR approved comedian. You can Google him. Your grandmother can watch him. Your kids can watch him, but very funny. And we got to go see him. And I took Becky and my stepdaughter, Rachel, to go see him. And it was, it was a great event. And... From doing stand-up comedy, um, I have learned and have met a lot of people. And so I got to know a friend of a friend through Brian Regan, and Rachel was a big fan. And so I asked for a meet and greet before the show. So I called my friend, and he said, yep, you're good to go. So we got there early, and here is us in the green room. And Rachel walked in, and Brian's like, hey, how are you doing? Thanks for coming to my show. And she was just all enamored. And they were talking about jokes, and Becky and I were just happy to watch them laugh and joke and have a good time and so we said thank you we left we went to the box office to get our seats and here's the cool thing about brian he did a really great thing and he switched the seats that i had paid for so the three of us got to sit in row one dead center for the whole show it was absolutely amazing so we're right there in row one and afterwards we're driving home and we're talking about the the highlights or our favorite jokes the punchlines and all that and it was really fun and then 48 hours after this picture was taken, we found out that Rachel's dad had taken his life and it was horrific and horrible. We've gotten through it. Rachel's been very resilient. We all have, but through therapy and talking about it and sharing and tears and laughter, we've come a long ways. But here's one thing that I've learned personally, the benefits of laughter. And it's so powerful. Laughter can get us through a tough situation, whether it's a death or a divorce or losing a job. It won't take away the pain permanently, but for that time, it, it takes our mind off it and we can laugh again. And I remember very vividly about three or four weeks after we were having dinner and somebody started to cry and then Becky started to cry and I started to cry. 
And I said, you know what? Why don't we go watch stand-up comedy for 10, 15 minutes? So we got up from the table, went over to the couch, and we put on Brian Regan. And within 10 minutes, we were laughing hysterically again. So laughter is very powerful in any situation, whether it's personal or at work. If we do use laughter, it'll take us away from that pain and, and help us get through the, the hard times. And then finally, number three, when we laugh and we work happy, we're more creative and we're better at problem solving. It fosters energy in our brains and again, it's the endorphins and dopamine, but it stimulates us and it helps us solve problems better. So if you're stuck on a deadline or a project with a team, maybe pull out uh, your phone and watch Brian Regan for five minutes. That'll help us be more creative and help us problem solve. So those are the three things I want to go over today. Here's a cartoon I found or a photo. Somebody got high score, 58, <laughs> which is cool. I wish I could take credit for it, but I did find it on the internet. But I always like to throw that one in because people, I don't think anybody who watches my webinars or master classes does not drive. And so it really resonates with people. Like I said, I don't have anything to sell you. If any of this resonated with you, have questions, I'm free for the next, I'll be on until 11.45. If you want to stick around and talk, I'm happy to do that. But three things I would love for you guys to do and try this week. Number one, take five minutes to laugh every day. Put it in your calendar, right? And whether you're at work or in the car or whatnot, podcast, whatever it is, take five minutes to laugh at something that you enjoy. And we all have different senses of humor. Some people have a dark sense of humor. Some people like dad jokes. Some people like puns, but take five minutes every day, put it in your calendar to laugh. The other thing you can do is Google dad or mom jokes, right? Everybody's got one and they're growers, but it does make us laugh. And we tell them because, at least I tell them because I want to see other people grown. And I'll give you a quick dad joke. What did the right eye say to the left eye? Between us, something smell. Horrible joke, but you probably grown. You laughed. I see you through your head back, Rebecca. But again, it's a little snapshot in our day when stuff is stressed and we don't know what to do. Take time to laugh. And then finally, number three is watch stand up with your partner. I don't know if any of you people do a lot of that, but whether you're on Netflix or Prime or Hulu, whatever it is, just uh, search stand up comedy and you'll find a plethora of stuff to do. And Becky and I have done this ever since we started dating. Some night before we go to bed, we'll put on a Netflix show and watch 15, 20 minutes. But we laugh and it helps us and relaxes our minds so that we can sleep better and get better sleep. So that's it. I do have one ask for you. I two ask quickly. We're better together and I'm always looking for feedback. So here's a QR code. And if you click it, it goes to a, a site called Talkadot. The code word, I'll put it in the chat, is talk. But if you take a quick picture and feel free to fill it out now or later. But what this will do really helps me better direct where I need to be and what I'm missing and what I'm doing, because I want these events to benefit you guys. So if you take a quick picture, I think there's four or five questions. You can put your email address in there. And if you have any questions, I'll get back to you. Also, I will follow up with each of you, everybody who's been on today, and I appreciate you showing up. If you want to connect with a 15-minute call, uh, happy to do that. A lot of times when I talk about laughter in the workplace, if somebody else's boss is on or a colleague or we're talking about mental health, people don't like to talk up, which I get because of the, the stigma, the shame and the guilt. So I would love to have a 15 minute conversation with anybody. And I will put that, where is that in the chat here? So you can just click on my calendar, find some time and, and away we go. Does anybody have any questions or want to talk about something specifically that I covered today? Is anybody still on? Anybody listen? I can't hear anything. <laughs> I just asked what the code was for the QR. Oh, talk. T-A-L-K. Yeah. And then also in the, in the chat there, I put my calendar as well too. So if any of you want to talk more about laughter, next the next event, and I'll send you an invite for that as well too. We're going to be talking about loneliness. I didn't realize how lonely I was or how lonely other people were coming out of the pandemic. I think a lot of us got used to being by ourselves or with our families. And so I'm going to share with you why we need to reach out and over and how to overcome loneliness. But if nobody has any questions, thank you all for your time, Rebecca, Brian. Hey, Jim. Jim is a buddy of mine. He's a big 
Edmonton Oilers fans. We're pretty happy these days. And thank you also, Ashley, for tuning in. But if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you being on here. And as we start this, we're only going to build it. And my mission to help a million people work happy will happen. It's just a matter of time. But the next event is going to be the second Wednesday of February on Valentine's Day. And we're going to be talking about loneliness. And I saw some more chaps. Oh, there's a QR code. Ryan, thank you as well, too. Um, thank you, Ashley. Everybody, thank you so much for being here today. We will sign off. Thank you for watching on Facebook. But again, if anybody has any questions, if you can fill out that survey, have any questions, please let me know. Take care. Go work happy. And don't forget to laugh today and every day. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.